of course, is Drogo the Two-Toed Sloth. And we actually found out the other day that apparently Drogo, or at least sloths, have nipples in their armpit. Have you ever heard this? No, and it doesn't sound accurate. I, I don't, the internet can't be wrong, right? Now, the only thing is, is of course, Drogo is a male, and they say that the females have armpit nipples to nurse their babies. Don't know, have no clue if males have armpit nipples, but we're gonna about to find out, all right? You think it's gonna work out? I don't know, but let's see, let me put some let's, nipples. Let's get some food in his mouth first, because he's probably not gonna like getting nipple checked. Okay, here we go. We're checking for nipples. I'm just feeling for nipples right now. I don't feel any nipples. I don't know, I've had my fingers in there a lot and I've never felt anything. So I think that, oh, he's not happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joke is like, you get your arms out of my nipple bits. So I tell you what, I don't feel any nipples, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, I think that this is false, at least for males. Do you think females have nipples? Maybe. I mean, maybe the way they hold their babies or something like that, they get, I have no idea what's going on. But uh, uh, for this one, at least for male sloths, I'm gonna say that this is debunked. There are no nipples in his armpits. None. I'm touching his actual nipple right now, though. Oh, so he's got nipples here. Yeah, you wanna touch it? Ooh! He doesn't want me to touch it. He his doesn't nipple. want me to touch his nipple. I'm touching his nipple right this, now with no this, issues. This isn't the first time that's <laughs> happened to me, by the way. <laughs> but yep. Look, no, there's no. his nipple. Yep, there's See his, his nipple. nipple. There's his nipple. There it is. There it is. All right, so no armpit go. nipples though. No armpit nipples, guys. So let me know in the comments if you think females do have armpit nipples or if that's just an internet thing. I don't know. If we ever get a female sloth, maybe we'll check it out. And by the way, welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is absolutely wonderful. As a matter of fact, you know our best-selling shirt happens to be this Fear Me shirt, but there are so many that you guys buy. So go ahead to reptilearmy.com. Get yourself some swag. Be our foot shoulders out there. Teach people about reptiles. That's what we need. We need you over at reptilearmy.com. Another day and another unboxing. Seems like we've been unboxing a lot of snakes lately, but the truth is, is it's just this kind of year when you're unboxing stuff, so let's just go ahead and jump in. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. And we got bags and we got zip ties, which means I have to find, boom, I've got clippers. Got to go run next door. I really quick to grab them. Got to keep some clippers over here because this is where I do all my unboxing. And these are all just a bunch more. I've been getting so many of these this year. You're probably going to be like, more, Brian? Of course, these are more. Bum, 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 bum. Pieball ball pythons, yay! Again, we're just continuing to get as many pies as we can because again, like I mentioned, we probably produce 100 plus pies a year, but they sell so well. I mean, they are one of the coolest animals out there as far as ball pythons go, so you can't get enough. I mean, literally, as many as I can get, I will sell, I guarantee you that. And I don't buy from anybody, you guys know that. There's only really, out of all the shipment of ball pythons that I buy, there's only like three people that I'm actually doing business with on a regular basis, and that's it. I don't really buy a Whole lot of stuff from other people to be totally honest with you but the three people i buy have a lot of pies and then have a whole bunch of other cool stuff too so it's uh it works out perfectly because again we produce a ton you know 160 170 clutches of ball pythons a year but we sell a lot more ball pythons than we could produce and i just don't have the space time or energy to increase my number of production so things like this work out great for me regardless i'm always looking for just kind of cool looking pie ball ball pythons but they're all cool right i mean every single pie ball ball python is cool in its own way and just making a really quick kind of look through them. Any smiley faces, emojis. Oh, I found a little kind of cool one from the last shipment. I posted on my Instagram page over at Snake Bites TV. It actually was uh, a camel. It was literally like a camel on it. I posted a picture up. You can go look at it, whatever the fact is. But uh, it was kind of cool. I had never seen a camel on a ball python before. But it was a super cool emoji. One last bag here. So we'll just take a look real quick to see what we've got going on. See if there's anything wild in here. And these are all look like really fresh babies too. Oh, look at these suckers, man. Ooh, doggy. These are a little bit higher white ones here. And I notice the ones that are a little higher white, like say 70 to 80%, are usually the ones that have the emoji pies, to be honest with you, the smiley face. Like this is almost a smiley face here. It's kind of a little bit like maybe a big eyed smiley face or something like that. So you definitely see a little bit of that. I don't see anything else, but uh, nevertheless, I always love unboxing snakes. And I tell you what, pie ball ball pythons are really what got me into ball pythons right back in the day. So to be able to already have unpacked, I don't know, 150 pies and probably already produce 50 or 60 with another 40 or so on the eggs. I tell you, I've seen a lot of pies this year and I tell you, I could never get sick of them. That's pretty awesome. Mike, are you gonna go, go by the spider? No. 
Just go buy it. it. You don't jumped. have to hold it. No. You don't have to hold it. Yeah. Aislinn no. has a pink toed tarantula. Push up. And you don't have to you don't have to hold it. Just go over by it. Because Ace is gonna teach us. No, no, no. Right over here. Right over here. No, oh, right oh, over dude, here. Come on. Come on. It's so fast. It's, it's not gonna do it. Look at So Aislinn, of course, our one of our animal educators here, is gonna teach Mike a little bit. Mike, get a little closer. Um, teach a little I'm bit about right pink. Alright, so tell us some fun facts. Pink toed tarantula is an arboreal tarantula. So different from some of our other tarantulas like Beauty, who we usually hand off to guests. Still super sweet. Which uh, means they can jump from tree to tree. They don't yeah. jump. They don't jump, Mike. Be a little closer. No. She's I look so like a tree. fuzzy. No. <laughs> look like a tree. Here, look, no, she's facing no, no. away from Absolutely you. Not. She's so fuzzy. You should just shoot poop at you. Oh, yeah, so that's they, okay. It's just a little poop. These guys can not only urticate hairs, but they also shoot poop. Yeah, so they have that additional defense mechanism where they can shoot poop if they want to let you know. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, go over there and touch it. No, touch it. There's no <laughs> way. Hey, so stop pointing it this way. Turn it around. Put it back in the Okay, stuff, okay, I'll put it and this take way. Back home. And you'll, you'll come pet the toast? No. There's no blood. There's not a chance. Look what we have here. We actually have Ben and Jerry shed out. Here's the head right here. Sometimes, every now and then, you can get a really good double head shot on them. You can see that both heads are there. You can see the eyes on this one, the eyes on this one, but it's not really that good of a shed when it comes to that. And of course, the reason that they have to break their shed is that a normal snake just sheds like a tube, but these guys have a Y, so obviously that just doesn't work. They have no choice but to get the shed out by actually breaking the Y in between their necks so that they can actually shed the rest of their body out. But it looks like the rest of the shed is absolutely perfect. Ever since we went with like a bioactive cage in here, it's just been shedding absolutely wonderfully. So we'll go ahead and feed Ben and Jerry here in a little bit too, now that they're fresh shed out. Always a good time when you have baby snakes hatching, at least as a snake breeder. And we have some bangers here. These are crazy. These are actually creamsicle tessera corn snakes and tessera corn snakes. Now tessera corn snakes are actually a pattern mutation. They have that really cool stripe and stuff like that. Oh, don't go anywhere, guys. Come on, stay in the cage. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, whoop. Okay, we're good. This one is an absolute ripper right there. Oh my gosh, we are in trouble. Okay, hang on a second. All right, I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's okay, it's okay. Stay, 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 stay. Okay, no heads, no heads. Okay, cool. So those tesseras are crazy. So creamsicle tesseras, normal tesseras, and that one is so spotted and so freckled out. That thing is an absolute ridiculous animal. Of course, we have some other corn snakes here that are beautiful too. These are actually diffused corn snakes, or what they would call blood red scaleless corn snakes. It's, look at that. What in the world? What was that thing thinking? And then of course we have some aneurytheristic diffused corn snakes right here. So I love aneurytheristic scaleless corn snakes. And then to have an aneurytheristic diffused scaleless, oh my gosh. And we have another one right here too. So we have a couple of these little monkeys right here. We've got a couple black corns, a couple diffused corns, stuff like that. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful snakes. And then I really love this clutch right here because there's some really interesting Oreo Pueblins. Take a look at this one here with that back pattern, like that striping on its tail. That is absolutely cool. We're gonna raise up a new group of Oreo Pueblins this year because I want to really work that project hard to get really wide sock-headed Oreo Pueblins, Halloween Pueblins, and even just normal Pueblins to be totally honest with you. So the Pueblin group is coming together pretty good, but definitely some cool baby snakes. And hey, this time of the year, every day, we have three, four, five clutches that are hatching out, and that's just absolutely awesome. I know you guys are always saying that I don't talk about boas enough. Well, we actually picked this up a while ago. It was actually Jessica and Bruce's. It's actually a leopard boa. Now, leopard boas are one of my favorite boa constrictors. I mean, I just think that they're absolutely incredible with their pattern and color. These are a Central American animal, so they stay a little bit smaller, a little bit darker and stuff like that. But look at the craziness of that leopard boa. And again, you get these into albinos and hypo albinos. You get those dragons and sun dragons and all that stuff. They are crazy cool. So I'm really looking forward to working with this leopard boa in the future and hopefully producing some of these guys. They can be extremely polymorphic as well. So there are a lot of different colors, but uh, absolutely crazy. Those jet black eyes. So uh, there's your little boa fix for the day. So guys, we actually have a special group in the house. You guys have a YouTube channel. You're doing kind of a fear factor type of thing, kind right? Of thing, yeah. So uh, we'll go ahead and put a link in the description to their channel. Uh, you guys let me know what that is. And you guys are conquering your fears. You're doing really well. Right. You're doing amazing, by the way. Thanks, I'm very, man. I'm very proud, oh of, I'm proud of all you guys. So you guys can meet Elvis now and we're gonna just have meet all the cool Yo, animals. Wait.
ready to feed Bugatti the Bowens Python. I always love feeding this girl because she's such an incredible animal. There she goes. There she goes. Look at that beautiful snake right there. Woo! Tell her there's nothing more stunning than a Bowens Python. I love her and she's starting to get some size to her. So she's got a nice meal coming right now. Neapolitan, which I'm now calling Neo for short. Of course, this is just this quarantine van. Eventually it's gonna go into a, an absolutely amazing enclosure over at the Reptarium. But we're gonna go ahead and see if it wants to eat for us. Come on, bud. Oh, look at that. Oh, look how cute that is. That's Neapolitan eating. That is absolutely amazing. What an absolutely beautiful snake. I tell you what, as this thing gets some size to it, and it gets 8, 10, 12 foot long, it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, those red eyes are ridiculous. I don't know if any of you guys are Matrix fans. You know, the actual movie, The Matrix. Remember in that scene where they say like, you know, you see all these little things. Well, I see a red head. I see whatever. Well, the truth is, is that I don't see a wall there. I see the entrance into 3.0. That's right. And I don't see a parking lot. I see part of 3.0. And the fact is, is we actually have a meeting with the city this week that is our first kind of official meeting with the city. We've talked with the city. They seem to be on board, but this will be the first official meeting that we're sitting down with Blueprint. So wish us luck. It's going to happen here in the next couple days. I will absolutely keep you guys updated. It's been a minute since we fed Ben and Jerry, so let's go ahead and see if they'll eat. There's Ben, of course. Ben always takes it first, and the idea is here again, let him kind of eat for a little bit, then offer Jerry. Usually if he's about halfway done, Jerry will sometimes take food. It's a 50-50 shot. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but Ben definitely took this one right away, so uh, we'll go ahead and see if Jerry wants one in a couple seconds. So let's go ahead and see if Jerry wants to eat. I'm gonna gently just kind of offer it to him and just see what's going on. Ben seems to be about halfway done right now. This is typically when Jerry wants to eat, but right now, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't seem to be showing any interest at all. And um, Gosh, you know, it just, you know, it's just kind of pressing against it. I don't think it's going to actually eat, which is really weird. Uh, I don't know why sometimes Jerry eats and sometimes doesn't. But the truth is, is that they share the same stomach. So it's really not a problem if Jerry doesn't eat. But boy, I do like seeing them both eat. There's no doubt about that. But even though Jerry didn't eat, I guarantee a Ben will take another one right now. See that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no hesitation there. So maybe we'll try Jerry again here in a second and see if it doesn't eat, we'll just feed Ben a whole bunch of food and that'll be enough for both of them. Getting down to the nitty gritty guys when it comes to clutches, I think we have 12 or 13 more ball python clutches to pull for the year. But this one is actually a pretty interesting animal here. This is actually a black pastel pinstripe, but then it was bred to a vanilla red stripe, which I think is interesting because I don't know how that black pastel red stripe pinstripe vanilla is gonna mix. Remember we hatched out that really crazy animal that had like, in this has actually got black pastel in it on top of that. So we could hatch out some more of that really cool stuff. I don't know. Doesn't look like a very big clutch to me. Mama, it's okay. Let me just go ahead and see what you got down here. It's got a couple slugs and it looks like we only got a few good eggs. So let's just go ahead and pull these eggs out really quick. Get them off the bedding. Here we'll get her all cleaned up. We got two little sluggers right here. So definitely a little bit of a disappointing thing, but that happens sometimes towards the end of the year. I've talked about fertility, stuff like that. As temperatures rise, sperm actually can go bad and stuff like that. So uh, we, like I said, we have 12 more clutches. I'm assuming most of them are going to be good. They all look good, but we're going to have some slugs. That's just part of breeding snakes. There's no doubt about that. We have three good eggs, a couple slugs from this clutch, and again, some really potential for some interesting things because, again, that vanilla, the red stripe, black pastel, and pinstripe mixed together, that could be something really cool. have no idea what it's going to look like, so hopefully we'll get lucky and the odds guys will be in our favor in these three egg clutches. But hey, we had an absolute banger of a year. We're not done yet, but man, I tell you what, it was one for the ages. Look at how cute the little red foot tortoises are just kind of looking at you. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's vlog. If you did, do me a favor. Here's a playlist. You could watch one or two of those videos. It would help me out a lot. Also, if you subscribe right over here, that helps me out a lot too. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile RB. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.